Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. And if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Hill Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer, Jacob Turner. And joining me for today's podcast, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones, who you might not recognize. You got the new look over there, AJ. I'm digging the glasses, man. I've had them on for podcasts before. Mm -hmm. I have it, seen it them. It just depends. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of reading today. Some hours are bugging me. It's, mm -hmm. uh, my, my wife convinced me to go public with this look. This is my office in the middle of the night grinding out content look can't see anymore because uh, it's 3 a.m kind of kind of <laughs> yeah the curtain has been pulled away man this is aj at night yeah, late I love night with look. aj I we didn't get late night with roy this year so we get late night with aj late night with aj that could be our own very own separate show yeah. okay. and i would wear it in the press box and post game we have to wear masks if i wear a mask it gets fogged up mm -hmm. so if you think i got a lot of typos now imagine me typing imagine with the glasses. foggy glasses exactly exactly yeah, this, this is my wife's encouragement mm -hmm. actually my facebook photo i have mm -hmm. a lot you do. That's a good point. Yes, I like my daughter and unshaven, so I was kind of maybe going a little incognito on that. I like it, man. I'm digging the look for sure. But, AJ, we're here today because North Carolina, the basketball team, finally released their 2020-2021 basketball schedule. A little late, but, you know, it's 2020, so what do you expect? Um, we're going to dive into that on this podcast. What would you say, AJ? I said exactly. Yeah, it's just, I mean, what can, sums it up. What can you say? So, Going to go through the schedule on this podcast, discuss some different things, some non-conference, some ACC stuff. So, going to be a fun one ahead. But, AJ, let's start off with the beginning of the schedule. Carolina, 20 ACC games. It's a 27-game schedule total in terms of regular season games. Let's focus on the non-conference first. I'm just going to run through Carolina's opponents right. real quick, and I'll let you dive into it a little bit more. Carolina opened the season on November 25th against College of Charleston in Chapel Hill. Then they traveled to Asheville for the Maui Invitational, which I never thought I would say those words in the same sentence in my life. But once again, that's 2020 for you right there. UNLV, their first game in that tournament. Then they'll play either Alabama or Stanford. And then follow that the next day with either Davidson, Indiana, Providence, and or, excuse me, Texas. And like I mentioned, those games we played in Asheville, North Carolina this year, Roy Williams hometown. So a little bit of a homecoming for him. Focus eight, next game, ACC Big Ten Challenge in Iowa City. Carolina will play Iowa on December 8th, followed up by a game against Elon on December 12th in Chapel Hill. And their last non-conference game is against Ohio State in the CBS Sports Classic in Cleveland, Ohio, AJ. So, I mean, looking at it, not a horrible non-conference schedule. Obviously, it's a little bit shorter, a little bit different than it maybe w normally would be during a normal year, but – Really not. You know, Ohio State's a tough game. I think Iowa could be a tough game as well. Alabama, UNLV, Stanford, how good are those teams? We don't really know yet. But, I mean, not nothing too bad, nothing too daunting if you're Carolina, right? Well, I think going to Iowa is daunting. I think, yeah, I that, think, that, that one kind of does stick I, out. I think they had Luca Garza, I think, best player yeah. in college basketball. I cannot wait yeah. to see him again in person. Mm -hmm. Solomon Columbus in person a couple years ago. Just love his drop step. Mm -hmm. and, and I've actually never been up there, so I'm looking forward to that That'll trip. Be a fun trip right? I think Iowa is a potential Final Four team. Mm -hmm. Ohio State's going to be good. Ohio State whipped Carolina last year in Chapel Hill. Blowout. And that game's going to be played in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So um, who knows if there will be any home court advantages anywhere, but that's going to be a, a quality opponent. Vegas is solid. And then if you get, you know, Stanford, Alabama, I think that's a quality opponent. Mountain and then the third team they're going to play in Maui, or Maui, excuse me, <laughs> yeah. in Asheville. Asheville. <laughs> Boy, Maui and Asheville could not be more different. No, that's the opposite places. <laughs> and whoever else they play, they're probably Providence or Texas, maybe Indiana. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's quality opponents that will quickly get them ready for a 20-game ACC schedule. But I'm really looking forward to that Iowa game. I, they've got a phenomenal big man who can play all around the court. It'll be really interesting to see who guards him and what Carolina learns from rolling up against a team that has other bigs too. Iowa plays big, so that'll be a really neat game to really find out where the Tar Heels are. The snapshot on December, we love to take snapshots of basketball season, right? Mm -hmm. Take that snapshot December 8th, regardless of what happens. Hold on to it. And then glance at it in February and see what kind of differences there are. I think there'll be a lot. So they'll get a lot out of that game in Iowa City. Absolutely. So will AJ, because I've never been there before. Absolutely. That's going to be, yeah, that'll be a fun trip for you, man. I, mean, I think that's, I've seen the arena before, too. That, that place can, gets rocking sometimes. Who knows how many people will be allowed in there? Yeah, that's the thing. That, that will be the other thing. I mean, we don't know what the environment's going to be. Like I, I've covered Carolina on the road a lot in the ACC Big Ten Challenge at places like Illinois and Michigan and Indiana, and the road environments were amazing and I think had an effect on the game. 
Not sure what will be the case with Iowa, but Iowa is such an experienced team mm -hmm. that they're going to be able to generate their own energy, their own focus without having people in the building if necessary. Exactly. And if I would have told you this time last year that Carolina was going to be playing the Maui Invitational in Asheville, I think you – I don't even know what you would have said. I have no clue. I don't. You probably would have thought I was crazy. <laughs> you'd, you'd have been laughed at. You'd been thought to be an idiot. Yeah, you're like, what do you mean, man? So th that's going to be an interesting one. But, you know, cool. Cool that it's in Asheville. Cool that it's in the state. I mean, that's, that's going to be kind of a unique environment also when you include that that's kind of – Everyone's yeah. got a home up there. That's where he's from. I mean, it's going to be kind of a cool homecoming for him as well. So, so yeah, I mean, tough non-conference schedule. There's some opponents in there you think Carolina should beat. But overall, I mean, there's going to be some challenges in there as well. They could lose a couple of those games. Easily. Definitely. They could lose in Asheville. They could lose to Iowa. They could lose to Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Charleston's, you know, not a, not a patsy not a to open up with. Yeah. Mm -mm. So, I, I like the schedule. I think it's good for them, especially with the kind of team they have coming back. For sure, for sure. Let's, let's switch our focus a little bit to the ACC now. Carolina opening up their ACC game. Uh, December 22nd at NC State. First time UNC has opened up a conference play against the Wolfpack since 2005-2006. And I think you said that's the earliest they played the Wolfpack in, what, since the 70s or something like that? November 30th, 1978. They opened the season against State in the old Big Four Classic. In fact, they opened up with State and Duke on neutral floor in Greensboro. That's crazy. And then the Big Four Classic died. And um, they, 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 it was State, Wake, Carolina, and Duke. Mm -hmm. And they would play a tournament every year, so there were. It wasn't uncommon that that Carolina or you know those four teams, a couple of them would play each other four times in a season. Mm -hmm. So they play then they play twice in a regular season schedule, and then play again in the ACC tournament. Crazy man, I kind of want to bring yeah. that back. That'd be kind of cool to see you know, four. four yeah, yeah, yeah. no like, chance. No chance that'll no, ever. No happen. chance. <laughs> There's a better chance that 2020 will happen again <laughs> than okay. that ever happens. Okay. Times a hundred. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Great point, AJ. Let's we set it going. There's a better here. chance that I look good in glasses than that happens again. <laughs> hey, man, you're pulling that? that look off. You're being modest over there, AJ. I'm, I'm digging the look for sure, man. <laughs> you just want to pay raise, man. Yeah, Stop exactly. It. Exactly. Pandering. Hey, we, we, you're pandering, Jacob. You're pandering. <laughs> Let's focus on the home and homes first instead of just diving into the complete ACC schedule, which, like I said, 20 games. That would be a little, a little jumbled right there. Let's focus on the home and homes first. Kind of the home and home series that they do have. NC State, like we mentioned before, Duke, Florida State, Syracuse, Clemson, and Miami. So, obviously, no surprises really there with the Duke and State games being played twice. Florida State's a good team. That'll be a tough trip to Tallahassee and obviously a tough game in Chapel Hill as well. Then you look at the likes of Syracuse, Clemson, and Miami. Who knows how they're going to be this year? But that home-and-home home series right there is not, not too bad for Carolina, but definitely some tricky opponents in there, obviously, with the, with the rivalry games too. You could argue that they're all upper half ACC yeah, teams. Certainly. I think, you know, Miami is going to actually have a – they might be able to have a full five-on-five -five practice this year. I think Clemson <laughs> I is a dark horse. I love Amir Sims. They've got a lot of guys there. Brad Brownell still there. You know, and, and I, I think that that could be a challenging home-and-home. -home. Syracuse, who knows what to make of the, uh, of the orange. But last time Carolina was on the court, what happened? Syracuse yeah. blitzkrieged them. Like, Syracuse is them. still Syracuse. The Carrier Dome is still the Carrier Dome. Maybe by then people are in the building. We have no idea. But Florida State is going to be really good. They lost a lot of guys. They're still going to be really good. And Duke, of course, is Duke. Uh, the other top half type teams that they don't play the home and home against would be Virginia and Florida State. So I think the home and homes are pretty challenging for Carolina. You, know, you got, what, 12 games right there with those teams? Yeah. Yeah, I could see them going nine and three against that bunch, eight and four against that bunch. That's, I'm, I mean, I'm not giving you a prediction right now. I'm just snapshotting this. I hate to use that term again, but mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a fairly challenging set of home and home opponents. I would agree. I would definitely agree. I think especially that, that Duke kind of NC State and Florida State, because you know those rivalry games are never easy, but we, if Florida State's in, in anywhere near as good as they were last year, obviously winning the ACC title uh, championship, uh, tournament championship, I should say, even though it was a little bit condensed. You know, that could be a really tough game down in Tallahassee and in Chapel Hill as well. Let's turn, turn our attention to the road games that Carolina's playing in the ACC, AJ. At Virginia, at Georgia Tech, at Pitt, and at BC. Those are the games um, besides the home and homes that they'll be playing just on the road. I mean, at UVA, that's always a challenge for Carolina. It always yeah. has been. Always has been for Carolina. At Pitt, at Georgia Tech, and at Boston College, though, I know we don't really know how good Pitt's going to be. It seems like they're kind of on the up and up right now, but the likes of Georgia Tech and BC, you would expect those to be some of the weaker teams in the conference. So, 
I mean, barring that UVA game, like I said, which is always a challenge for Carolina, that away schedule in terms of teams that they're just solely playing on the road, it could be a lot worse. Let's just put it that way. They should be able to handle those other three. UVA, I mean, there's, you're not, I'm not going to pick them to go in there. Look, 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 UVA look. is the best team in the league. I probably agree. Uh, they've got a lot of maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam Hauser, I, I, he's a guy that Carolina fans may not know who he is right now, but they will by the middle of January. Mm-hmm. That, that's probably the best team in the league. And um, Carolina has not played well up there in a long time. And, and, you know, when you think about the other three, last time they were at Georgia Tech, they played really well. They didn't play them last year. But last year they lost at Pitt. And, um, and they've, they've had some sluggish games up at BC they before. Have. It's a really weird place to play. And um, so we'll have to see. But they should be able to take care of those last three. Uh, the home game stretch is also kind of interesting, too, which I know you're going to talk about. I think the home and home is where the difficult, most difficult part of the schedule is. I think the other ones they got shouldn't be that daunting of a task, given what this team's makeup is. Exactly, exactly. Like you mentioned a second ago, let's turn our attention to, to the opponents in the ACC that Carolina is solely playing at home. Louisville, Notre Dame, Wake, and Virginia Tech. That Louisville and Notre Dame really stand out. Wake Forest is, can always be a little bit of a tricky game at times, and then Virginia Tech's always a, a decent team and a team that tends to give Carolina problems a lot of the times, especially in Blacksburg. And obviously this one will be in, in the Smith Center. So I do agree with you what you said. I think that home that home series right there, looking at those opponents, is probably a little bit tougher than Carolina's away away schedule right now. Yeah, because you know Notre Dame could be decent. Virginia Tech could throw up forty five threes and hit a bunch of them. And Drain them. Be a long be day, competitive yeah. that night. Louisville's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Well coached team. They got some big guys. So uh, that's uh, that, I, I like. I think those are good games to play. To me, it's the way the games are grouped in the schedule, mm-hmm. uh, where you have a tough stretch, you have a not so tough stretch, and the way they close with their last three home games. That that to me is really interesting because a lot of times it's not who you play, but it's when you play them. And who did you play before and who do you play next? That that often is uh, what's just as important as if you just lay it out, okay, these are who they play. Well, it's easy to kind of pick at those games. But suddenly if you've got Clemson after playing somebody really hard on the road and you got to go to Clemson, suddenly maybe Clemson's a little bit more challenging. We know what the ACC is like. Going on the road is tough. And this year – we don't know what the road's going to be like uh, as far as fans and everything goes, but it's still going to be a challenge. Absolutely. Fans are still going to be ready to play at home. They're going to, and, and there will be fans in most places. I know there's not going to be a Duke, mm-hmm. uh, which is going to be so weird. But um, you know, going on the road to basketball is not easy. There's a yeah. reason there's a home court advantage, and there's a reason people refer to home court advantage all the time. So um, I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing that. And those home games are I think they're winnable. I think this team would be really good. So when I I look at them individually like that, it doesn't mean the same thing as it does when you group them together, which I know you're about to do here in a minute. Exactly, exactly, AJ. Um, Let's talk about – I'm segueing for you. Yeah, you are. Your segue has been great today. Let's talk about Carolina's – Must be the glasses. (laughs) Yeah, it probably is, making you look even good over there. Let's talk about Carolina's toughest stretch of the season. Um, In your opinion, what – what would that be looking at that schedule just in terms of that's that's a dawning kind of few games for the Tar Heels? What stands out? Well, February 2, February 2nd through February 13th, they have a four-game stretch. But they're at Clemson, which I think has the potential to be an NCAA tournament team. I think so. They're at Duke. Don't need to say much more. Home against Miami, which I think can also be an NCAA tournament team. And then at Virginia, who I'm picking to win the league. That's a pretty tough stretch right there. Stretch, and it yeah. comes at a time in February where Carolina usually starts getting it going. So that'll be a really, really fun stretch to, to see how this team handles those four games. What about the, I don't know if easiest is the right word, but I'll use the word lightest. What do you think maybe is the lightest stretch for Carolina? And kind of what you look at and say, well, that's, that's a chance for Carolina to put a little win streak together. Well, the four games preceding that. So they have a chance to go into that stretch on a bit of a roll from January 19th through January 30th, they host Wake, mm-hmm. they host State, they go to Pitt, and they host Notre Dame. They should win those four games. So when they go into that four-game stretch, they should be feeling pretty good about themselves. If they wobble at any point beforehand, they should be finding themselves during that stretch and go into those four games uh, thinking, that okay, we're, we're ready to take this next step. So I think the schedule lays out really, really well. Even when you look at their last three home games, uh, their last three home games, by the way, are Louisville, FSU, and Duke, sandwiched in between a road games at BC and Syracuse. 
that's a great opportunity to close really strong. And if you're looking at seeding and all that kind of stuff, that's an opportunity to really raise your seed profile. And um, I like the way the schedule lays out, Jacob. I like the way that the tough, the easy stretch leads into, or the light stretch, I don't want to say it's easy, leads into the more demanding stretch and then the way they close this thing out in the schedule. I think it plays it, it, it plays into the favor of a team that's going to have to come along over time because of all the newness, all the youth. Uh, the backcourt's going to be very, very young. We're going to, you know, it's going to take Roy time to figure out what his rotation is and to figure things out and to, to kind of narrow it down to his eight or nine man rotation that he'll mostly go with when he gets into February. So they, they have an opportunity to work through the schedule and get to that point and play their best basketball when the most demanding part of the schedule comes. And of course, that'll just feed right into March. Mm-hmm. I think it would be wrong of us to not mention the Duke games as well and talk about those a, a little bit when we're discussing the Carolina basketball schedule. Um, both Duke games are on a Saturday. They play at Duke first on February 6th, and then in the season, which I guess will be a senior night for Carolina, um, with, a, with a home game against Duke on March 6th. So two Saturday night primetime matchups against the Blue Devils. I mean, that'll always be fun. And it's a month apart, which I yep. think is the most uh, amount of time in between their scheduled games in a while. That's a good point. A couple yep. of years ago, they had, I think they played twice in 17 days, and they played a week later in the ACC tournament. It was just, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. I like it being this way. So if you have a guy out in the first game, you have a chance to get him back for the second game. Uh, so in, in closing the season at a, on a Saturday night at home against Duke is always fun. Uh, closing the season at Duke on a Saturday night is always fun. And I think both games being on Saturdays is cool. The ACC knows what they're doing. They're going for that 6 p.m. slot. They're going for big-time ratings nationally. But I'll tell you what, Jacob, the idea of going into care I've, – I've covered I don't know how many games at Cameron Indoor Stadium, probably a couple hundred at least. Awesome. And going in there for a Carolina Duke game without getting paint on me, spit and alcohol sweat from the camera crazy is going to be a very, very weird experience. I'd be willing to bet you the media's not even down the court. We're going to be elevated somewhere. If they even let us in, we don't even know that yet. That's a heck of a point. There's still a lot of undecided stuff about media availability in basketball this year. So it's going to be a crazy year. And it's going to be really interesting just to see how Duke handles home games when they don't have that amazing advantage of the students uh, just blowing the opponent's ears away. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a good point, too, about the, the Duke game in particular at Duke in terms of, you know, what kind of media is going to be there? Because all the media sits right on the court, you know what I mean? And that, that might be a little – so you might be sitting up in the – you know, the I rack, no not idea, the yeah. rack. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's all a guessing game right now. Yeah, who knows? Until they announce something, I, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They're going to play. The game will be played whether we're there or not. They're not mm-hmm. too concerned about us. Mm-hmm. And, no. uh, and I think it will be interesting that this very young Carolina team will go in there and not have to deal with all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. It's per- another perfect segue, AJ. You mentioned this is a very young Carolina team. Um, overall, looking at the ACC, I mean, you expect Carolina can, to contend. You, you expect the likes of Virginia, the likes of Louisville, the likes of Duke to be in and around there as well, contending and, and, and challenging for something, maybe even the likes of Florida State as well, like I said, with how good they were last season. Um, what's your, just your overall thoughts on the schedule and, and kind of maybe how this ACC season plays out? Because, I mean, there's so many unknowns and so many things we don't know yet. But, I mean, I think looking at the schedule, at least for me, like, like you said a little bit earlier, I think it's a – I don't think you're looking at this if you're Carolina and you're, you know, sitting there like, whoa, this is going to be tough. I mean, there's a lot of really good games in there. But, I mean, when you got North Carolina written across your chest, <laughs> every game's tough. So, I think they're the next – the other three toughest – best teams in the league, Virginia, Duke, and Florida State, Carolina plays them all on the road. Yeah, that's challenging. Uh, so, but, but the, I don't – I don't think the league is going to be as good as it's been. It wasn't great last year, kind of underachieved mm-hmm. based on what the, uh, the prognosticators thought uh, would be ACC basketball. I don't think it's going to be great again, uh, you know, outside of those teams and, and maybe Louisville, because I would think the pedigree and just and, – and they're well coached. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to be an NCAA team. You know, Miami, Syracuse, Syracuse Clemson, NC State, those are all clubs that – have a chance to be NCAA tournament teams. I kind of like Miami and Clemson maybe getting on the right side of that line. Mm-hmm. And then the bottom of the league, you know, BC and Wake are, are just not very good. Uh, Pitt's sort of a wild card. I like what Jeff Capel's doing there, but, you know, they got to make a push now. Mm-hmm. And Georgia Tech, they've got some players. I'm just not a, I'm just not a huge Josh Pastner guy, mm-hmm. and I, I don't really know what to expect from them. I, I, I can see them winning a couple of games they shouldn't win, and then losing games they shouldn't lose, and then I'll just kind of 
be wherever they are in the end, which is a mediocre basketball team. So there are a lot of opportunities to pick up wins, especially if Carolina can gel early and the freshmen get accustomed to one another early. And that's going to be a challenge because there are no exhibition, exhibition games. There's no secret scrimmage. And they don't have an extra few opportunities to play uh, the, the, the lower end Division One teams that would give them confidence and opportunities to work together on the court against somebody other than themselves. Mm-hmm. So it may take a while. They may lose a couple of games early on because of that. But I do like the way the, the conference schedule shapes up for this team. Mm-hmm. They have a chance, I think, to finish in the top three. I did my, my picks for the ACC uh, the other day uh, when, I, when I sent in my votes, and I did pick them second. I picked UVA first, Carolina second, Duke third. Mm-hmm. So then I had Garrison Brooks on my first team all-conference team. So um, that's kind of where things stand. We're going to do a lot of podcasts as we get ready for the season, Jacob, where we're going to break down the ACC a little bit more and break down Carolina a little bit more. But that's sort of my snapshot of the league right now. Decent league, five, six, maybe seven NCAA tournament teams. But um, an opportunity for a young Carolina team, I think, to have a pretty good year. Mm-hmm. Last thing I want to mention, AJ, before we wrap this one up, the ACC tournament starting on March 9th. That'll actually be in Washington, D.C. I have to say, I was a little bummed. I really enjoyed it being in Greensboro last year. Yeah. The Charlotte one's okay, too, but I think Greensboro is just a great location for it. But it might be a little different for you. Obviously, you're from – you got some, got some roots up there in the Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia area, so that might be cool. a little, little cool for you to kind of be able to go back to your own stomping ground. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, I stay in Northern Virginia, which is where I'm from, mm-hmm. and I used to work in D.C., and my dad worked in D.C. and stuff like that for years. So I love going back up there. It's my – Former home. I'm now a North Carolinian. I like to call Wilmington my adopted hometown because I had such a great ride there. Well, that's but, um, yeah, I, I like it being in D.C. What's weird is that Maryland's not in the league anymore. It would yeah. be more fun if Maryland was in the league and the tournament's up there. But there's plenty of Hokies and Wahoos up in that area. And there's an ACC culture up there. I mean, the ACC is growing up, you know, it was the Redskins, sort of the Orioles, especially when they were real good, and it's long before Washington got a baseball team again. And it was ACC basketball. Mm-hmm. AC basketball is a big uh, – growing up, teachers would roll out the TV I'm, on that Friday or Thursday. Actually, for a long time, it was Thursday and Friday during the I ACC remember that tournament. Too. Mm-hmm. And instead of science class, you're watching the ACC tournament. Nothing and better. they did that up there. I know, that, I know there's lots of stories about it in North Carolina, but they did that in the D.C. area too. Okay. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited it's in the D.C. area. Anytime I have a chance to go back and go back home and, and be in that amazing city, uh, I'm all for it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I remember those days too that – teachers rolling in the, the 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 big boxy TVs on the on the little rolling things and we're sitting there watching you know the ACC tournament I, always, I love that I, was, I think middle school was the last time I ever got to do that maybe early in high school but then you could just watch it on your phone or you'd sneak it in the back of the classroom so yeah I used to I used to absolutely love when the teacher would roll in different world yeah. now exactly man exactly well that's gonna do it for this podcast AJ talking a little bit about Carolina's basketball schedule was just released today on Tuesday so yeah, I mean, it's going to be fun. We're not too far away now. It's fast. Two weeks. Quick and quick approaching. Yeah, I know. Two weeks. Two weeks. Crazy. And we're going we're gonna to have a ton of stuff coming up mm-hmm. the next couple of weeks leading into the basketball season. So uh, check us out here on our YouTube channel and also at TarHeelIllustrate.com. Absolutely. We'll and, a lot of stuff. and real quick, last plug I want to put in. AJ put out a little article on Carolina's basketball schedule that's on TarHeelIllustrate.com. Dot com that came out a little bit earlier this morning so be sure to go check that out you can also um aj kind of breaks down a little bit more about that schedule and, and who carolina's playing so as always guys if you enjoyed it be sure to like it be sure to share it we'll see you guys in the next one thanks, thanks.